Hello everyone, welcome back from that short break. You are tuned into Z Companion Live with me, Anila, and I am joined in the studio today by Mr. Brajesh Roshanma, who is talking all about banking and overseas banking. If you have any questions guest, you can phone us. Our phone numbers are free for our UK and Europe viewers. And if you have any questions with regards to banking, maybe overseas banking, maybe you have an account in India, or you want to transfer money and get more for your money with regards to savings, do pick up the phone and give us a call. And after I have handed, once Sujata has finished with her top tips, I'm going to be speaking to Mr. Sharma about banking, bonuses, and the Greece crisis as well. So here is Sujata with some top tips for you. Good evening, everyone. Jaise ki aap jante hain, aaj studio mein hum baat kar rahe hain about overseas banking. शो के पहले हाफ में मैंने आपको कुछ इंटरेस्टिंग फैक्ट्स बताए थे अगर आप ओवरसीज बैंक अकाउंट में कुछ पैसे ट्रांसफर करना चाहते हैं इसके बारे में लेकिन अब मैं आपको बताने वाली हूं कुछ टॉप टिप्स रिलेटेड टू ओवरसीज बैंकिंग सबसे पहली चीज है कि अज्यूम दैट नथिंग इज द सेम ये सबसे बेस्ट रूल होता है फॉलो करने के लिए इन फॉरेन फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजैक्शंस की चीजें बदलती रहती है कुछ सेम नहीं रहता ये करने से आप हर एक प्रोसेस को एक ओपन माइंड से देखेंगे एंड यू विल आल्सो लर्न अबाउट व्हाट यू नीड टू डू एंड उसके साथ-साथ आपको क्या अवॉइड करना चाहिए क्योंकि ये दोनों चीजें बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है अनदर थिंग दैट यू नीड टू डू इज आस्क अ लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चंस अगर आप किसी फाइनेंशियल सिचुएशन के बारे में किसी फाइनेंशियल सिचुएशन में हैं और आप कंसर्न है उसके बारे में तो ये सोचिए कि आप किससे बात कर सकते हैं चाहे वो कोई बैंकिंग रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हो या फिर कोई प्रोफेशनल हो उनसे बात करके उनसे सारे सवाल पूछ के अपने सवालों के जवाब उनसे जरूर लें ताकि आगे जाके आपको कुछ प्रॉब्लम्स ना हो करेंसीज आर मतलब करेंसी के जो रेट्स होते हैं वो बदलते रहते हैं दे आर वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम ये तो आपको पता ही होगा बट वाइल यू ऑलरेडी नो दिस लर्निंग अबाउट करेंसी डिफरेंसेस कैन हेल्प यू डिसाइड द एक्चुअल कॉस्ट ऑफ थिंग्स जो एक्चुअल कॉस्ट है उसके बारे में आपको पता चलेगा एंड यू विल नो एग्जैक्टली वॉट यू आर बार्गेनिंग फॉर तो ये इंपॉर्टेंट है कि आप ध्यान रखें कि करेंसी रेट किस तरह बदल रहे हैं अनादर थिंग इज इट इज इन पर्सन इज द बेस्ट वे टू हैंडल एनी आजकल सब कुछ ऑनलाइन हो गया है Uh, सारी चीज़ें लोग ऑनलाइन करते हैं सारे ट्रांजैक्शन ऑनलाइन करते हैं अगर पैसे चाहिए तो एटीएम में जाके निकाल लेते हैं लेकिन ये करने से बेहतर है जब फाइनेंशियल बड़े बड़े फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजैक्शन की बात आती है तो उन्हें इन पर्सन हैंडल करना ज़्यादा बेहतर होता है इससे आपको डिफिकल्ट सिचुएशन में मदद होगी एज वेल इट विल ऑल्सो अलाउ यू टू बिल्ड गुड रिलेशनशिप्स विथ योर बैंक बाई गोइंग इन मीटिंग द पीपल हु यू आर एक्चुअली गोइंग टू डील विथ अनादर थिंग इज की मल्टीपल अकाउंट्स अगर आपसे हो सकता है तो ट्राई कि आप सेपरेट अकाउंट्स रखें इन बोथ योर होम कंट्री एंड ऑल्सो इन द कंट्री जो मतलब जिस कंट्री में आप अभी रह रहे हैं दिस विल अलाउ यू टू हैव मनी एट योर डिस्पोजल आप कहीं भी हो आपके पास पैसे होंगे सो इट्स बेटर कि आप अलग अलग अकाउंट्स रखें दोनों कंट्रीज में और एक चीज ध्यान में रखना जरूरी है वो है क्रेडिट कार्ड फीस जो होते हैं वो ज्यादा हाई हो सकते हैं जब आप अपना क्रेडिट कार्ड किसी फॉरेन कंट्री में यूज करते हैं तो यू माइट फाइंड दैट यू नीड टू पे एडिशनल सर्विस फीस इन ऑर्डर टू डू सो इंस्टेड ऑफ डूइंग दैट आप ध्यान में रखें अपने क्रेडिट कार्ड कंपनी से बात करें जाने से पहले ट्रेवल करने से पहले सो so दैट आप पता कर सकते हैं कि कर सकते हैं कि आप कोई एक्स्ट्रा चार्जेस तो नहीं भर रहे हैं और उसके साथ साथ आप पता कर सकते हैं कि एक्सचेंज रेट भी वो ठीक तरीके से लगा रहे हैं या नहीं Another important thing is you have to monitor your accounts. आपके जो फाइनेंशियल अकाउंट्स हैं मेक श्योर sure कि कुछ सस्पेशियस नहीं हो रहा है कुछ प्रॉब्लम्स नहीं हो रहे हैं क्योंकि बहुत सारे फ्रॉड्स होते हैं सो इट्स ऑलवेज बेस्ट कि आप हमेशा ध्यान रखें हमेशा अपने अकाउंट्स को मॉनिटर करें सो दीज वर सम टॉप टिप्स अबाउट ओवरसीज फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजेक्शन आई होप यू फाउंड दम यूजफुल नाउ लेट्स गो बैक टू द स्टूडियो Thank you for those top tips, Sujata. I'd like to welcome back Mr. Sharma. It's lovely speaking to you. And I mean, just touching on what Sujata was talking about there about it better be going in person when it comes to banking. And I mean, before the break, we were talking about how great technology is. But when it comes to overseas banking, what would you recommend? In overseas banking, also the people. the basic instinct and basic nature of the people uh, all over the world is almost the same uh, some section of uh, society 
uh, they prefer uh, who are in the who are tech savvy they prefer getting into the internet banking and mm. uh, e-banking or all sorts of technology use but there is a section of society who feels that a personal touch should be there mm. and they feel that uh, there should be a brick and mortar presence also and uh, uh, we have ensured we have tried to ensure both types of banking uh, combining technology with a banking with heart mm. okay and to continue what I, the, some of the facts that I gave in a nutshell there before the break, I touched yeah. upon some really key figures there, but I said it very quickly. But talking about measures that have been put into place to cut back on risk taking, I mean, what does that mean for normal people? Uh, yes, uh, it's a, really a fact uh, because, uh, uh, because of the incentive culture, because of the, uh, the desire to push the sales uh, sometimes the bankers tend to either missell or get over enthusiastic, uh, enthusiastic and uh, they oversell or missell the product to the customers. Right. In, in, in lure for the, uh, some bonus or some gains. Mm. To just cap it, to just restrict this type of practice, I think uh, you know, the government, the regulators have uh, come out with uh, some of the provisions that, uh, uh, that are welcome. I think uh, that would uh, be, that would uh, give uh, confidence to the customers in the system. Okay. Uh, because uh, the target oriented business sometimes is always not welcome also. Mm in pushing the targets, achieving the goals, you tend to err, you tend to over, uh, get over enthusiastic. So for that purpose, the top bank executives, who sometimes the regulators felt that they pushed the particular product, which had some bonus, some incentive into that, right. uh, in order to gain uh, the monetary benefit. Mm. So the provision made by the regulators is that uh, within a period of 10 years, their bonuses, the benefits that uh, they had accrued because of uh, that uh, mis-selling of the products or uh, mm. uh, the pecuniary gains that they had uh, obtained could be clawed back. I mean, one article that I read on this said that it doesn't matter what kind of measures are put into place or regulations, bankers always seem to find a way to get their bonuses. But I mean, that was obviously, that article was obviously touching upon mistrust and people having a lack of trust you know after such scandals that we've seen with it when it comes to bonuses I mean can people trust their banks after so many scandals missold PPI claims can, can we trust our banks I think uh, I'll vouch for uh, being a banker a <laughs> line banker and a professional banker uh, since last 29 years I feel that uh, um, the minority few have given bad names uh, to the bank banking fraternity and uh, the majority, I, I'll say that uh, almost 99.99% uh, they are the most law-abiding citizens in every respect and they have got the faith in the regulators, they have got the confidence in the regulations and they won't like to uh, do a business which is crossing the limit. Uh, I, I, I feel that, uh, I, I, I feel that I should not agree with that uh, proposition and the article that you have read. Uh, and the bankers are the most law-abiding citizens, people type uh, in this world, I feel. Right, okay. uh, so, um, uh, personally, as a banker, I have felt that uh, the moment we tend to cross some limit, uh, we feel, uh, uh, we get a feel that we should not do. And uh, uh, my uh, idol had been the Mahatma, who had uh, all the virtues, and uh, as a banker, we would be abiding to the uh, teachings of uh, the great Mahatma and uh, here also we feel that uh, every time we interact with the regulators and we would like to get the their response also as to how we are uh, performing okay. do we have uh, the confidence of the customers mm. because ultimately if the customers lose faith in the banking system then the entire uh, uh, system is going to collapse this is the main stay of the any economy that I mean when it comes to banking, a lot of people do think, and I know you're obviously, you are playing good cop here because, you know, you are a banker, you're in, and I'm putting some quite controversial questions to you, but 
A lot of people do think that when it comes to banking, the government and banks are very closely linked. And actually, the banking sector holds the government hostage to some extent. I mean, what would you say to that? What's your comment on that? I think uh, uh, the first part of your question is very correct, that the banking system and the government is uh, uh, both are quite closely linked. Mm. Because the banks are tools of social and economic change. And the, my agreement to your question ends over here itself. Right. We, as a banker, are tools of change. We are instruments for all types of social changes. We implement the government policies. Uh, but we are not in hand in glove with uh, the government in any sort of shady dealings. We abhor uh, such type of uh, acts. And we, I, as a banker, would deny this uh, totally, that okay. it's not a statement of a fact. And we are. Uh, we, I, as a banker, back in India, I, I must share this uh, fact that uh, uh, immediately before coming to UK, uh, there was a uh, financial inclusion program launched by uh, the government of India. And I tell okay. you, it's a, a revolutionary program that the government has launched to include the financially excluded section of the society into the banking mainstream. Okay. And wow. within a, a period of three days, some 12 crore, I will, uh, it is an Indian uh, measurement system, yes, yes. 12 crore accounts were opened by the banking system within a period of three days. Wow. And it is almost equivalent to the population of any country also. Wow. So bringing okay. a population of a country into the banking fold hmm. was a change that the bankers had uh, made and that way they were hand in glove with the government. Right. They were the tools of that change and there the association ends and whatever the policies of the government are here also, we would like to implement uh, the government policies and we would like to abide by the rules and procedures laid down by the regulators and the government. We would not like to cross any limit. Okay, Mr. Sharma, thank you very much for that. I mean, you are fighting your court there very well, I have to say. Um, I do want to touch on Greece because obviously, you know, we're talking about banking. It's a banking show. There's no way that we can't touch upon what's happening in Greece right now. I mean, for people who may be seeing it in the papers all the time, on their screens all the time, and they've kind of just switched off with what's happening, can you just explain in basic terms what is happening in Greece? What is the Greek economic crisis? Yes, uh, I think uh, uh, it's a very uh, basic question about the Greece uh, and the, uh, the Greek crisis had been uh, hogging the limelight in almost uh, in the entire it world. It's been yes, everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. But the genesis of the Greek problem, I think uh, uh, somewhere, what I feel as a, as a, uh, as a common man, as a, as a banker, I feel that uh, uh, in 1999, there was uh, uh, the common currency, euro was introduced. Uh, and uh, as, as the common currency was introduced, the trade cost among the eurozone countries came down significantly. Okay. So the volume of the trade increased tremendously. But the labor cost increased more in the peripheral countries like Greece. Right. So because okay. of the increase in the labor cost, as compared to uh, Germany and other Eurozone countries, yes, yes. as the result of that, the Greek, the Greek government saw a trade deficit because they could not compete because of the higher labor cost. They could not compete in the export market right. because their, their product was costlier. Okay. So as the result of that, a uh, trade deficit uh, started cropping in. Right. And a trade deficit actually means that the country is consuming more than what it is producing. Right. So it started borrowing to just breach that gap. Mm. And I must share that uh, the trade deficit and budget deficit in uh, 1999 of Greece was to the extent of 5% of GDP. And gradually, it increased to 15% of GDP by 2008 and 9 when the crisis set in. Okay. So it was a huge trade deficit. Yes, and yeah. to just breach that gap, it started borrowing. Okay, it started right. borrowing, and it started borrowing heavily at a higher rate of interest. Mm -hmm. Here lies the problem. Thereafter, what happens? 
just to tide over such crisis, uh, breach the uh, trade deficit, the government usually does it to depreciate its currency. Right. Greek government could not depreciate the currency because it had a common currency in the form of euro. Okay. Even if it had, it had decided to depreciate it, it could not have depreciated mm. it. So it had to compete with the other countries at a higher rate of interest. Okay. The problem continued and, and the problem actually started snowballing into uh, the major uh, problem. Right. And during that period of crisis also, I remember a figure that I would like to share. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In 2010, the Greek government, uh, government started to, uh, decided to generate some funds and it uh, uh, initiated the process of government bonds auction. And it offered an amount of 8 billion euro five-year bonds. Mm. And surprisingly, it was oversubscribed by four times. Wow. Means okay. people were interested in investing those bonds. Why? Right. Now the question arises, why? Why, yes. Because they had offered higher coupon, higher rate of interest. Um. Means the government was borrowing at a higher rate of interest mm. and the government did not have any clue how it's, it was going to repay when the, the bonds are going to mature. Okay. And most of the investors were the foreign banks mm. who had invested heavily in the in the government bonds. I mean, Mr. Sharma, what does this all mean for us here in the UK and for the rest of Europe? Uh, the G Greek crisis, uh, the Greek economy, I must uh, share, I must tell you that mm. it's not uh, uh, that big uh, that can have an uh, impact on the world economy. Okay. Uh, the Greek economy itself is uh, uh, once upon a time it uh, used to grow at a very rapid pace mm. uh, but uh, everybody now had conceded with the fact that uh, all the figures stated by the government was uh, uh, a misreporting of the facts. Okay. Uh, on that basis, now everybody, uh, all the economists almost, they agree on one point that uh, uh, the Greek, uh, the Greeks as a country was not ready for uh, getting inducted into the, uh, the common currency fold. Okay. So uh, uh, that economy is not going to have a significant impact on the world uh, scene, mm. but the debt, uh, the government's indebtedness is to the tune of 320 odd billions. Uh, uh, so that, that amount is significant, but the world economy and the Eurozone countries definitely do have the capacity capacity to absorb that. Okay. So uh, uh, we should not uh, feel panicky about the Gre Greek crisis. Uh, it's not the um, earthquake that's going to jolt the Eurozone for that matter, what I feel. Okay. Yeah. I mean, people in Greece are only allowed to, at the moment, withdraw 60 euros a day. And one of our viewers actually emailed in saying, were asking, is money owned by a bank? Because in US, there was a law change that said that if a bank goes bankrupt, your deposit is at the end of the list of, credi of creditors. So how does it work in the UK and Europe if this happened? Uh, the investor in Greece also need not worry because uh, uh, the rule is totally different. Uh, in US, uh, uh, it, it, uh, the in depositor is at the lowest rung of uh, uh, the creditor. But here, the deposits uh, in UK and in Euro Europe, mm. both the, all the places, their uh, deposit is protected to a certain extent. In Euro, it is protected to the extent of uh, 100,000 okay. uh, euros. And in UK, uh, as per the financial service compensation scheme, uh, the depositors' eight, uh, 85,000 pounds is uh, protected per wow. entity, per uh, person. Suppose if, they, if uh, there is a joint account, yes, yeah, that's exactly if uh, uh, there is a joint account and uh, the amount held in that account is uh, say uh, 300,000 mm. uh, pounds, yeah. then uh, 85 plus 85 is going to be compensated by the FSCS. Right, okay. So that is a great comfort that mm. the investors, the depositors can draw now, not only in UK and Europe, but in Greece also, people need not worry. 
their money is safe to that extent. You really have shined some a ray of sunshine on banking today, I have to say. I mean, we have jumped from various topics and very quickly, it's been brilliant. I do want to touch upon banking with India and how people, because obviously interest rates here are very low. If, they, if people open up an account in India, they get a higher amount of return for their savings. How does it work? Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, uh, I mean, why would people want to save here what, what, when they can get such a high amount of return on their savings if they, invest, if they put it in a bank account in India? In India, definitely the interest regime, uh, interest rate regime is slightly higher as compared to the UK. Mm. Uh, but uh, you'll have to bear uh, so many things in mind as a, as a, as a customer. The, the the risk, the interest rate risk, the exchange rate rate risk is always involved in that. Okay. So um, uh, I will not say that one should not open account in India in because in India also the um, uh, the, the banking system offers uh, a variety of plethora of uh, uh, varieties of accounts uh, in which the customers can open, right. can transact, mm. and here also uh, the customers do have the option of opening accounts in uh, different currencies and uh, they can get a better rate of interest as compared to uh, any of the uh, local high street banks okay. so the customers is uh, customers definitely are winners at the end of the day okay I mean and if somebody does want to transfer money or put money into account what would your advice be with that yes uh, with the advent of technology I think uh, things have become really very easy you are a router for technology, yes, aren't you? Yes, <laughs> yes, and uh, the technology is a uh, uh, great support for uh, such persons. Yeah. And I'll just uh, share that uh, uh, the internet banking, the e-banking platform has given the option uh, to the customers that they can transfer uh, money from in UK to India. And if it is uh, in the same bank, then it's going to be almost uh, free of cost. Only uh, so that uh, with the click of mouse, they can uh, transfer that their own amount, their own fund from UK to back to India. And uh, uh, I will not say that uh, the, the money changers and the other agencies are also there, mm. but uh, a trusted partner, a trusted bank uh, definitely uh, should uh, have more confidence of the customers, what I feel. And how do people? What, what should they be looking out for if they do want to go and do this? I mean, we obviously know, you know you're from Union Bank, but if people generally wanted to go and find out more information, how should they go about doing this? Is it a safe way of doing it? Uh, you're talking about... Uh, generally, where, with, when it comes to transferring money or, or opening an account in India, what, how should they go about finding the means of doing that? Uh, for opening of any account in India also, I think the, uh, the banks who are... Uh, the Indian banks who are present over here they can facilitate opening of accounts in India also. Okay, right. Uh, b b because uh, uh, they are the extended arms. The, uh, they have the, some of the banks uh, are still in the branch state and uh, some of the banks like us are in the subsidiary state. Right. So, uh, but definitely we can facilitate uh, the uh, the customers in opening accounts in India also. Okay. And, uh, and other banks are and, able to facilitate yes. that too. Yes. Mr. Sharma, it has been lovely having you here. Thank you very much for all of the advice and knowledge you have imparted on us. Thank you very much. Thanks we'll come a lot. To the end of the show. <laughs> uh, thanks, uh, Anila. Thanks uh, from core of my hearts to you. And uh, I really sincerely thank all the viewers who are viewing the show. And uh, I would request all of them to um, uh, have an experience of Indian banking also. I so. think you've sold the experience of Indian banking very well yeah. and you seem to be very honest and so yeah and the transparency about banking as well has really come through on tonight's show so thank you very much. Thank you, thanks a lot. I hope you've all enjoyed tonight's show and found it very knowledgeable. We will be back on Monday with a show on IVID uh, so do stay tuned to Z Companion. In the meantime I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Good night.